Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, let us discuss about Drachenculiasis. Drachenculiasis is a parasitic disease which is mainly caused by a parasitic nematode called as Drachenculus midensis. And this is a scientific name of the nematode and the common name which you can give is Gunia worm. So in this video, I am just going to call it as a Gunia worm where the scientific name you can call like this. Okay. So normally the main cause of this Drachenculiasis is mainly caused by a female worm but not male worm. Why the male worm cannot cause this Drachenculiasis disease because the main, the main function of that male worm is only for the process of mating or as copulation. After the process of the mating as well as the copulation immediately that male worm will lead to death. But the remaining process will be occurred by the female worm only. So the total cause will be happened by the female worm but not by the male worm. Okay. And this Drachenculiasis disease you can commonly see in the areas like countries in such a way like uh, Western Africa, India, South America as well as the Pakistan. So next coming to the uh, structures of this Drachen, you know this one Drachenculus medinesis which is also called as Gunia worm. So this will be the female and this will be the male worms. So female worm, the, the, if you compare with the size, the female worm is very much larger when compared to the male worm. So let us see the anterior end. So there will be two ends for the female worm as well as the male worm, right? This will be the anterior end, this will be the posterior end in the same way if you see in the case of female worm also. So let us see the case of anterior end. So in the anterior end, this is called as buccal capsule, which is called as mouth. So oh, what is the main function of that mouth? It mainly helps in the consuming of the gastric juices when it is present in the host of human beings or else it also consumes some type of juices which are present in the host of another host. I mean, which is present in the uh, crustaceans, which are which are which belongs to the class of crustaceans. OK, so these are known as muscular esophagus, glandular esophagus, and these are called as cervical papillae. This both are called as cervical papilla and this is known as nerve ring. So this will be the anterior end structure of this gunia worm. So now let us see the size of this male worm as well as the female worm. So coming to the size of the female worm, it ranges from 800 millimeter in length as well as the breadth is 1.3 millimeter. And it is the longest among nematodes because it covers up to 120 centimeters, right? If you see in the case of centimeters because it is very much, very much long. And coming to the male worm, it is 40 millimeter in length and 0.4 millimeter in breadth. So this is the size of male worm as well as the female worm. In, by this you can understand that the male worm is very much smaller when compared to the female worm. So the female worm is very much big when compared to the male worm like that. So next coming to the discovery. This uh, this has this discovery of this Dranculiasis disease has been done many long years ago. If you see here in the AD of 980 to 1000, uh, AD. The Arabian physician called as Avicenna discovered this disease called as Dranculiasis. Okay, and in the Saudi Arabia, the parasite called as Gunia worm will they will call in they will call in the Saudi Arabia such as Vena Medina. Okay, so this Gunia worm belongs to the phylum Nematelminthes and they belongs to the class Nematoda and they belongs to the family Dracinclodia. So now let us learn about the life cycle of this Gunia worm which causes the Dranculiasis disease. So coming to the life cycle, the one thing which the one most important thing I'm going to say you now is that life cycle because uh, if you see here normally after the completion of the life cycle, it takes one year of time for the cause of the for exposing the symptoms in a person who is infected with this disease. Okay, so coming to the life cycle, I'm going to start the life cycle from the leg here from the foot because why I'm going to start from here you can understand later after the completion of the life cycle. So coming to the life cycle process, it begins from the foot. It begins from the foot and here normally the main symptom which you can see in the region of the foot only and here in the foot blisters will be formed. So what is the blister you can see the clear image of the blister at the end of the video. Okay. So here blister is nothing but which is red in color which occurs at the foot region not only the foot but also it occurs in the hands also. Okay. So within this blister what happens is that from this blister L1 larvae will be will be protruded out will be will come out from this blister. L1 larvae is nothing but the first stage larvae. And remember that larvae will be either in both forms. I, I mean, it will be in both forms, male worm as well as the female worm. Both the male worm as well as the female worms will get protruded out from this blister, from the foot. And that male worm as well as the female worm, the length and the breadth ranges from 650 to 750 micrometers in length. Coming to the breadth, 17 to 20 micrometers. And remember, these are first stage larvae which has been protruded out from the foot, from the blister region. Okay, so now what happens now that uh, and here remember the most, one of the most important thing which you have to remember is that this can get protruded out only when this leg has been exposed into the water. 
that's nothing but when the human being is playing in the lake or else in the ocean or when he is doing bath in the oceans or as lakes or as any ponds then only this will get this blister will get activated in such a way that the l1 larva will get protruded out from this blister so now what happens the whole process occurs in the total life cycle process occurs in the water only in the source of water only but if you see in the case of human beings uh, it doesn't occur in water it, uh, it occurs in the stomach region right so i'm going to explain you it later properly so that you can clearly understand so this l1 larva will get protruded out only when there is a presence of water so now what happens this water also consists of copy pores right and now this copy pores what happens this copy pores will consume this l1 larva which has been protruded out from this blister right now what happens is that there will be many copy pores which are present in this uh, lakes as well as the uh, you know oceans or ponds right there will be many copy pores present right so each of the copy pore each single copy pore will consume 15 to 20 larvae only like that many larvae has been present in the same way many copy pores are also present so in this way the life cycle will get completed so uh, now what happens is that this copy pores will take two to three hours of time to uh, to make that larvae to enter into the gut so this larvae takes two to three hours of time to enter into the gut wall of this copy pores and within one hour what happens again that when it reaches to the gut wall within how within one hour immediately it enters into the coelom of the gut what is coelom coelom is nothing but the empty space which is present in the gut is called a coelom and this enters into the coelom so what the what does this do in the coelom the main the main function they will do in the coelom of the gut is they mainly uh, occurs two maltings two maltings so two maltings is nothing but conversion of l1 larvae to l2 larvae conversion of l2 larvae to l3 larvae so in this way two maltings occurs so what is the first molting l1 larvae to l3 larvae sorry l2 larvae and second molting is l2 to l3 larvae in this way two maltings occurs so after the completion of two maltings immediately the l1 larvae will get converted to l3 larvae right so here the l3 larvae which is present inside this gut is inactive in form that's nothing but it is not active i mean it doesn't undergoes any mating or else it doesn't undergoes any copulation okay because it doesn't have any space to copulate there so, and the because the gut wall of this size the size of the gut wall is very much small and it is congested right so it doesn't undergoes any copulation there so it is inactive in form of course they are alive they are inactive in form both the male as well as the female which is present in this gut are inactive in form but they are survival so now what happens so this copy pores this copy pores will enter into the contaminated water that's nothing but as they are present in the water this human what this human will do they will consume this lake lake and pond water right so when this con when they consume this contaminated food and water immediately what happens is that within 6 to 7 hours from the mouth region to the stomach this will enter which one the copy pores will enter and remember that copy pores consists of this l3 larvae third stage larvae okay third stage larvae is nothing but they are totally matured remember they has capacity to copulate i mean they has capacity to mate okay and within the stomach what happens so within six to seven hours from the mouth it will enter into the stomach so now what happens in the stomach if you see in the case of the stomach so the, the, this happens this is a zoom region of this stomach what happens in the stomach like that okay so this is the copy pod the copy pod will lead to death okay the copy pod will lead to death it will die and after the death of this copy pods what happens is that immediately that l3 larvae which is present inside that gut will get protruded out okay and now what happens this l3 larvae and remember that l3 larvae is both in male worm as well as the female worm so when it gets enter when it gets uh, you know escaped from this copy pods when it get protruded out from this copy pods then it will become active so what happens when it become active it will get started molting i mean where the you know mating process occurs copulating occurs so when this copulating occurs what happens this male worm will lead to death as i have said during the introduction part this male worm will lead to death so when this male worm will lead to death immediately what happens the female worm will the female worm will become pregnant because the mating process has already completed right so after the process of this mating what happens if the male worm will lead to death and the female worm will become pregnant so when this female worm will become pregnant within two, three, two to three months immediately it lays the embryo it doesn't lay eggs okay where the direct embryo will be uh, formed it, it lays the embryo so when it lays the embryo that um, and remember that male worm which has been died will be uh, will be escaped through the outer environment in the form of fecus which will be released by the human beings and now the female worms will be protruded out from this blister right which is in, which enters into the food region so if you see here in the human being structure if you see here this uh, like this it moves towards the food region 
where I have drawn only 4 here because in the major cases in the major cases which I have found in the internet the main symptom which you can see is near the leg region only that's nothing but that, that's only the reason why I have drawn here the leg structure so here the blisters will be formed the red color one like a it looks like a wound you know it looks like a wound which is very much soft and that, from that blister immediately uh, L1 larva will be produced and how this L1 larva will be produced when this uh, human being is exposed into the water only which I have said you at the beginning of the life cycle so when he is exposed into the life cycle so when he is exposed into the water immediately the life cycle will again begins that's nothing but again the L1 larva will be protruded out and here the female worm will also lead to death after the protrudation of this uh, L1 larvae immediately the female larvae will also lead to death because uh, as the female larvae will lead to death immediately this L1 larvae which is in the both the forms remember the both forms of L1 larvae will be protruded out that's nothing but the male worm as well as the female worm will get protruded out from this blister of the foot right then that male worm as well as the female worm will again complete the total life cycle and again it copulates and again it forms the embryo and again it gives the daughter individuals like L1 larvae and again the total life cycle will get repeated like this so hope you understood this life cycle so now let, let us learn about the symptoms as well as the treatment so you can find the symptoms at skin gastrointestinal as well as the common symptoms you can see like this coming to the common coming to the symptoms which you can see at the skin are blisters hives and ulcers blisters are nothing but which i have said you in the life cycle in from where this l1 larvae will get protruded out right like that and coming to this gastrointestinal symptoms which you can see are like diarrhea nausea and vomitings and common symptoms which you can see like fever and itching itching is common right because uh, you can't you can't bear the pain where when this larva will get protruded out because it is very much it is very much pain where we can't bear really okay coming to the treatment there is no specific drug still which still they have discovered and normally the normal uh, you know the common drugs which, which they gave for a normal person who is infected with this type of disease called draconculosis are metronidazole as well as the thiabendazole these both are the common medicines these both are the common drugs which will be given for every person who is infected with the parasitic disease any parasitic disease it may be why they be why they will use this one is to control the uh, disease and uh, and for also another use also that's nothing but the for extraction process extraction process is nothing but extraction of the worms from that wound region that's nothing but from that blister region so this is about the treatment symptoms life cycle and the structure and the introduction part of this dranculiasis okay so if you like this video just do like and subscribe and if you like this video just you can also share to the your friends this video to your friends and if you have any doubts regarding this video you can comment in the comment box immediately i am going to clarify your doubts and 